everyone welcome back my name is Shane and today we'll be having a look at Fisker. Fisker says it's developing an electric pickup truck. We've heard rumors about this, we've heard rumors, we've seen leaks of the Fisker Alaska pickup truck on Twitter and this leak came from another Henrik Fisker tweet from Twitter. So this is actually quite interesting because for one this image greatly resembles the Tesla Cybertruck. It's not the exact same, in fact some would say it's not even similar but if you look closely enough you'll realize that the body panels also have a very simplistic and almost flat design. And that's quite genius by Tesla and being adopted possibly by Fisker because this means that you can keep the cost at low price if the body panels are flat, if the color is just one color. The more simplistic it is to build your pickup truck is the cheaper it will be to build your pickup truck. And that's exactly what most manufacturers are going for today. And that's exactly what Tesla is doing today. So Henrik Fisker says he's considering a radical pickup truck body style for its next production vehicle and has previewed how it could look with a rendering on Twitter. So for one, like I said, I think he's taken a lot of inspiration from the Tesla Cybertruck. That's without a doubt. But at the same time, he's managed to make it look like a regular pickup truck similar to Tesla but also completely different from anything that we've seen before. So this is actually quite genius. Now he said on Twitter, next vehicle might be a lifestyle pickup truck, but not just any truck. We want to create the lightest, most efficient EV pickup in the world, making it the most sustainable. So this image is just a teaser, not the final render. Final will be way more radical. So he's basically saying that the final design of this vehicle will be way more innovative, far different than we've ever imagined. And it's going to be a surprise and a shock to us all because just like the Tesla Cybertruck was, Henrik Fisker is taking a very similar strategy, which I think is smart. I've got no problem with that. It's innovative. Now, the interesting thing as well is that Henrik Fisker did not delete this tweet. He previously tweeted off a Fisker truck that's called Alaska and he deleted that tweet saying it was simply a mistake but he hasn't deleted this tweet, which means that they're in full force of developing their own pickup. They're serious about this decision. And that's exactly what we need them to be, is serious about delivering and building their EVs. And I've got to say their EVs, their SUVs and their pickup truck has a very unique style about them. It's quite different, which is actually really good to get into the EV market. My only criticism of Fisker is that I do believe that they need their own manufacturing factory. I don't think they have to start with 5 or 10, no one does, but they need at least one, possibly either in Europe or in America. We're going to need huge investment for one of these things, but I think this is all part of Enric Fisker plan. By building these amazing prototype, by getting Austrian developers to build these vehicles, he's putting a huge advertisement on these vehicles to get more investors investing in the company, therefore getting the company more money to invest in things like factory. But if it's not investing in factory, I'm not interested. If it is investing in factory, I am very interested. So question is, why am I talking about the Fisker pickup truck? Well, we've got a quick comparison. The, the best comparison right now, the best comparison right now is probably to compare the Fisker Ocean as a off-road SUV vehicle, compare that with the Cybertruck. Obviously, you could easily compare the Fisker Ocean, which is a perfect comparison to the Tesla Model X. It's a perfect comparison. They're both SUVs. But first, we're going to compare it with the Cybertruck. This is a huge comparison because the Cybertruck is just in prototype. While the, while the Fisker Ocean will start delivering by the end of this year. Now under the skin, the Ocean is powered by 80 kilowatts per hour lithium battery, which should give it a range of over 300 miles. And thanks to the CC Type 2 charging at 150 kilowatts per hour, ultra rapid charge times are around 20 miles per minute. A solar panel roof is set to offer up to 1,000 free miles per year, presumably in a very summer area. Presumably in a very summer area. And the interior materials are made from recyclable plastic. In fact, Fisker's biggest selling point is that the car should be more sustainable, most sustainable across the entire production to dispose life cycle. And the interesting thing is that the only thing I don't like about this car interior wise is possibly the dashboard and my most dislike about this car is the steering wheel. 
I do think it's a little bit old fashioned and I do think it needs a proper update. So what the Fisker Ocean isn't designed to, to be is a off-road vehicle capable of climbing every mountain and fording every stream. The only hill is fundamentally built for are those that begin with, which is a nod to Beverly Hills. Unlike the Tesla Cybertruck, which is designed to deal with tough terrain and pull large objects, never want to shy away from the opportunity. When it comes to presenting itself, Fisker has now planned a rugged version which might try to step on Tesla's toe. So enter into the Force, enter the Force E. Now the Force E, which means Force Electric, according to Fisker, more than 22,000 people from 116 countries have shown interest in the ocean, with the majority of reservation unsurprisingly coming from the United States. Now, in the aftermath of COVID-19 crisis, now in the aftermath of the pandemic, Fisker reckons people want something that will unite utility, sustainability, and affordability, three things that the Cybertruck is aiming to do. So they want to push the almost shameless bandwagon in introducing. So the Force E optional package come exclusively. So the Force E optional package come exclusively on all-wheel drive variant, offering approximately 300 horsepowers, with more to come from the high-performance version. The list of modifications include upgrade and lift suspension, off-road wheels a roof rack with integrated lights, a rare hatch tool, and a power plug box. So the Force E Fortify Ocean will even carry a full-size spare wheel. Fisker aims to sell this version for 37 grand, which should take it down to 30,000 US dollars after incentives are taken into account. So Tesla has even changed the Cybertruck to bring its dimensions closer in size to a comparatively small ocean. Now side by side, the mid-spec dual moto all-wheel drive version is closer to the ocean, offering a 0-60 to 60 time of around 4 seconds in somewhere of the region of 300 miles of range. Now the Cybertruck itself is set to retail at 21,000 pounds, which is actually insanely low and I don't think there's any way this car, the Cybertruck, will sell for 21,000 pounds. So we can take a fairly accurate guess that the dual motor version will roughly be on par with the Ocean 24,000 pounds price tag. Once again, I do not think the Fisker Ocean will cost 24,000 pounds. No way. Yes, it's being built in Austria, that's closer to the UK than the USA, but nevertheless, I don't think it's going to be anywhere that cheap. So obviously, we know the Fisker Ocean is heading to the UK, it's recently made its European debut which of course was great success, so it's really good to see. Now Fisker essentially is optimizing the ocean. Now of course this is Fisker's way of optimizing the ocean to best suit off-roading to compete against Tesla Model X and Tesla Cybertruck. They will not be better off-roading than the Tesla Cybertruck, and it can get rather competitive, which is good for us. So that's what I'm looking forward to.